The Unix shell makes all Unix programs more powerful by the way it invokes them. This includes the use of wildcards, variables, quoting, so-called here documents, and even the ability to run a command and have its results appear as arguments of another command. These are the things we'll see in this unit. When you want to specify many similar files to a command, you can specify them through a wildcard. In contrast to other operating systems, these are expanded by the shell, giving the same power to all commands. As an example, I'm creating some files. store1.a, store2.b, store3.c, store plain and another store. To list these files, I can use a wildcard character called star, which matches anything. So, typing echo star, the shell matches the star with all files in the current directory and passes them as arguments to echo. Then, echo outputs another store, store1.a and so on. In order to filter the output of echo, we combine the star with some name parts of the desired file names. For instance, echo store star returns all files that begin with store and end with any suffix, excluding in this way the file another store. Another special wildcard character is the question mark, which matches one single character rather than anything. So, echo star dot question mark returns any file that is followed by a dot and then a single character dot. We can also specify a set of characters by enclosing them in square brackets. For instance, echo store star dot ab in square brackets matches files that start with the word store, then are followed by anything and a dot and then end with the character a or b. What is more, we can specify ranges of characters. In this way, store star dot a to z matches all three suffixes a, c and b. Finally, there is a way to specify the complement of a set by adding an up arrow after the open square bracket. We see for example that echo store star not b matches files that start with store, are followed by anything at the dot and finish with any suffix apart from b. In our case, these are files store1a and store3c. The shell also supports variables. These come in handy to specify global options, to write small programs and also to keep track of, track of global state. Variables keep their values during each shell session. We assign values to variables by placing their name on the left-hand side of an equal sign and then the corresponding value on the right-hand side. Here, name equals John assigns the value John to the variable name, while surname equals Smith assigns Smith to surname. Note that no space is allowed before or after the equal sign. To use a variable, we prefix its name with a dollar sign. So, echo dollar name outputs john, which is the value of variable name. The shell offers a number of built-in variables, the most important of which is the path variable. Path contains the locations of all directories where the shell looks up the commands we instruct it to execute. In my case, path includes home dds bin, user local bin, user bin and bin. As you can see, they are all separated by a colon. The home built-in variable corresponds to our home directory where all our files are stored. For me, home is home dds. To expand a variable name embedded in other characters, we use the dollar sign and also enclose its name in curly brackets. For example, to echo the phrase keep up with the, with the smiths, where smith is stored in the variable surname, I enclose surname in curly brackets. To assign values to variables from the standard input, we will use the read command. So, running read abcd expects input from the terminal. I assign the words live free or die, and now I can see a, b, c, d as regular variables and access their content with a dollar sign. Note that to use the dollar sign in a literal way, some special handling is needed. 
echoing this pen costs dollar four ninety nine expands to this pen costs dot ninety nine because dollar four is treated as a variable. Sometimes you want wild cards and other special characters to lose their magic meaning. This is where quoting is used. The strongest type of quoting happens with single quotes. Special characters enclosed in single quotes are handled in a literal way by the shell. If I now echo this pen costs $4.99, the dollar sign is not expanded by the shell, which results to the desired output. Another type of quoting occurs with a backslash, which deprives the following character of any special meaning. As an example, I echo the pen's cost is $4.99 by preceding both the single quote and the dollar sign with a backslash to escape the processing of the single quotes and the variable treatment. A third type of quoting is offered with a double quote character. Variables preceded by a dollar sign are specially treated when enclosed in double quotes. On the other hand, wildcards and single quotes lose their special meaning. By, dubbing, by typing, for example, dollar name fridge, dollar sign name received 499, we see that it expands to John Fridge Smith received 499. We note that the double quote should be escaped here to lose a special meaning. In contrast, backslash within single quotes isn't specially interpreted. To place a regular single quote within single quotes, we need to first end the single quote sequence use backslash to escape the regular single quote, and then continue our content with another sequence of single quotes. Keep in mind that both single and double quotes can expand to multiple lines. For instance, I can use echo with a multi-line string that starts on one line and ends on the following. The greater than sign, prompted by the shell, indicates that more output is expected until the multi-line string is finished. Amazingly, the shell also allows you to have a command's output be used as arguments to another command. To achieve that, we start with a dollar sign, then enter an open bracket, continue by typing the name of the desired command, and we finish with a close bracket. For example, if I run echo, today is dollar $date, date will be executed as a command, and the result will be passed as an argument to echo. So here, the output is today is Sunday and so on. In order to create a timestamp when a command starts, we can assign the current date expressed in seconds to a variable using the percent %s option, which counts seconds since 1970. In this way, I save the start time into a variable named start and then display the corresponding value using echo dollar start. Next, I sleep for 5 seconds to let some time pass and assign the end time to another variable called end. Eventually, we can display the elapsed time using another command called expr, which evaluates an expression by receiving as arguments the timestamps of the variables end and start. In our case, we see that the process lasted 20 seconds. Bear in mind that in older scripts, the syntax of dollar $open and close bracket that we use to derive the output of a command may be expressed with backticks, the reverse single quote characters. A feature we will use often in this course's examples is the ability of the shell to specify the standard input for a command after its invocation. This input forms what is called a here document. A common way to specify a here document is using a double less than sign followed by a backslash and then a sequence of characters that will be used to denote the end of the here document. EOF, which stands for end of file, is a sequence commonly used, but we can use anything we like. After EOF, the shell expects the contents of the here document. For example, here I enter the following verse from Robert Frost's poem The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. EOF denotes the end of the here document. 
the input is lastly passed to cut minus n, which receives it and numbers the lines. In this way, I get the same text but with the lines now numbered. If the ending sequence of a here document is not preceded by a backslash, the variables and commands are expanded within it. Consider as an example the beginning of an email message from Darth Vader to a government child support agency. The date field of the header is filled with the output of the date minus r command. Once I finish the input of the document with the end of message, which is the sequence that ends the message, we see the output completed with the actual current date. This concludes our foundations unit on command line arguments. Stay with us.